Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 19 of our C Sharp for Automation Testing Advanced Video Series. And in this video, we will be talking about Link and its awesomeness. And before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 18 since this part will have some continuation of code from that part. And you can see that we have turned our attention from C Sharp for Automation Testing from basic to advanced right now. So we are now entering into the advanced zone as compared to the basic zone because link is something which is completely not required for automation testing purpose. You may think of that, but it is required in some cases while you work with lots set of data or if you're going to work with collection of data and you have to manipulate few data in here and there so link is kind of very very important for automation testing as well and right now you can see that this is an era of uh, testers where they have to work very closely with the developers in terms of the agile world where both testers and developers must have to have an understanding of how the code is working and how to deep dive into the code and resolve the issues which developers has made. So right now understanding the link concept is really really important as well so C sharp most important part of uh, working with collections of data is link and so we are going to get started with the link for our automation testing video series as well and today we can talk about select query of link and we'll understand how things work so let's get started link language integrated query is an innovation introduced in dotnet framework version 3.5 that bridges the gap between the world of objects and the world of data so traditionally, queries against data are expressed as a simple string without tight checking at compile time or IntelliSense support. Furthermore, you have to learn a different query language for each type of data sources, such as SQL database, XML documents, various web services, and so on. And Link makes a query a first-class language construct in C-sharp. You can write queries against strongly typed collections of objects by using language keyword and familiar operations. And that's the power of Link itself. You can see that the word innovation introduced in .NET Framework version 3.5 that bridges the gap between world of objects and world of data. This is really, really an important line. Actually, Link really made this happen for c -sharp language. And now, because of the extension method which paved the way for the language integrated query and because language integrated query has paved a way for vast majority of framework functionalities right now in c -sharp something like entity frameworks actually uses link and similarly in mvc there are a lot of places where link is actually being used and this is really an innovation because it has reduced tremendous amount of coding that we were practicing before for various data sources and within sql database you can also work with queries for oracle or you can work with mysql and link has really made the coding much easier than before and we are not really going to discuss a lot more about how Link is actually working behind the scene with coding like entity frameworks and MVC that I have spoken before. But we're going to talk about how it works with the collections of data because we are dealing with collections of data in many cases. So as I already said, where is this link is very, very helpful. It is really helpful in working with collections. So as you can see here, we have a list of users and the user has different properties like user ID, name, age, and email, phone number. And this is a very, very simple scenario where there's only user with few straightforward properties. What if the user has uh, some other properties, which is collection as well, something like addresses. And within this address, you will have uh, address with an address name and the street name and the flat name and which country he is from and what is the zip code, something like that. That's a collection of data again. Similarly, if you're going to have uh, a user with his uh, company history, then he will have like four or five different companies and different addresses and what is this, the company's phone number, something like that. That's a collection again. So while working with some complex data as even in our automation testing while pulling the data from the data source and uh, using that with the UI element to be passed in, link is very, very helpful and it's very, very handy. And link way of writing is actually two types. So this is very important again to understand. So the first one is the query expression and another one is the method based expression. And if you ask me what is the difference between the query expression versus the method based expression, Query based expression is more like the SQL query that you can see over here in the first box. It says from user in users, select user.name. 
So you can see that the from keyword is coming in first, whereas the select is actually coming the second line. But in the real SQL query, this it's the other way around. There will be select first and then there will be followed by from. But it's different in here. Basically, the from user in users, it's basically behind the scene, it is actually doing an iteration. So it's more like a for each. And then within for each, the select user.name is more like where you're gonna ping in the item from the particular for each loop. So just relate something like that, but it's not the reality, but in turn, there are so many things happening behind the scene, the query expression. And in order to understand this much easier, method-based query is coming into handy. You can see that users.select of an X, there's a lambda expression there and it says X dot name. So you're gonna select this, you're gonna perform exactly the same operation here, but this is method-based. So that's what is the difference between a query expression versus a method-based expression. So let's quickly see all of them we discussed in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm gonna to flip to Visual Studio. All right, so this is the same project which we are working from our previous videos. So what I'm gonna do basically is I'm gonna create a very, very simple query operation for our existing collection example.cs file that we worked before. As you can see here for our collection example, we were iterating all of our collections, which is nothing but the list of users using a very, very simple for each loop. And that was really working us, working with us and we kept able to do the operation, which is pretty much exactly the same way we are going to do using the link as well. But you will understand the real lessons while we start working with some complex data and complex kind of queries. But let's quickly see a very, very simple query instead of the for each loop that we were discussing before. So I'm just going to comment this code out. And then, as I said before, we are going to write a very, very simple query, which is gonna select a user's name. Let's say I'm gonna select all the user's name from a collection of data. You can usually do that using this for, for each loop as well. So what you can do is in order to select all the user's name, you can just use this for with a username, something like this, and then you can save it. And if you run this code, it is gonna run exactly the same way what I'm gonna demonstrate to you right now. But in order to uh, make this with a little more easier way instead of the for each loop, that's where the link comes into picture. So right now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just do this. So users is equal to from, and I, as I said before, the link is gonna do another way around of the selection of a value within a collection. From which collection you're gonna do? From users, right? But you're gonna give a name for that. User in users. So basically this is the collection. We're gonna select a user. And then you're gonna select all the name from that particular user. So you're gonna say select user dot. You can see that it's automatically bringing us all the value or the properties within a user's class, which is nothing but the name, right? Which I'm going to look for. And it's gonna show us a message here that the users has already been used because that's within the same scope. So maybe I can say something like a user list, right? That makes more sense. And now if I want to iterate through all the values within this user list, once again, I have to do a for each loop in here. So I can just do a for each and then I can just do the users and I can just iterate through all the values. So maybe user list and then I can say user and then I can just do console.write line of user.name. Oops, user, sorry, it's gonna return as the name. So no user.name again. So users and if I run this particular piece of code, it is going to execute the code, but we have not called this generic collection with custom class from our program.cs file. So I'm gonna come on this particular piece of lines, and then if I want to execute this using the collection example over here, you can see that it is gonna execute and it's gonna show us all the name from within the particular collection. It is pretty much exactly like the for each loop that we did before in our previous videos of this course but we are using a language integrated query to select the name. And if I want to select all the users, let's say I want to select all the values from the user, because right now it's just returning as the name. If I want to select all the users, then I can just remove this dot name and if I can save it. 
And now if I just try to run this, you can see it will show you something different this time. It shows like C sharp basic dot user, C sharp basic dot user, user. So basically it is telling us that this is the value of users within that particular uh, collection value. So you need to specify what you need to select from within there. This is nothing but the name, right? And this time it is bringing us the name and all different properties within that particular uh, variable user. And also it makes sense. So now if I try to run this particular piece of code, it brings exactly the same result as we did before, right? So this is how you can perform the operation using the query based expression. And if you want to perform the same operation using what is called as a method based expression, then you can just do this. So user list is equal to, I can just maybe come on this piece of code and uh, I can just do this. So users, that's the collection. And there is a method called select and you can see it is an extension method this time as we discussed in our previous video so let's do that and then there is the lambda expression i need to perform because it actually expects us to pass the function of what it is the users right so i'm going to say x says that x dot name I just want the name or if i want to select then x then probably it's going to return us all the users and if I run this particular piece of code, it's going to return Kartik, Sam, and Jacob. And if you want just the name, then you can just go over here and just put the name. And now if you try to run the piece of code, it's going to exactly do the same operation as we did before using the query based expression, right? From our next video, we're going to talk about a little more detail on our link. And also we're going to do some kind of selection based on conditions, something like a ver operation. So that's it guys, once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.